for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of Starbet, Suave, and Endon Dandruff Treatment Shampoo. Now, let's all play What's My Line? Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a nice surprise this evening. A new guest panelist, a famous news commentator, Mr. John Cameron Swayze. And now it's my pleasure to introduce another of my favorite ladies of television, Arlene Francis. And we're all in a fine mood because we've been laughing backstage at a new book called The Life of the Party that is climbing up the bestseller list. And the gentleman that wrote it is the life of the party. His name is Bennett Cerf. Pleasure to herald the approach of the Demosthenes of newscasters, the Plato of panel moderators, John Charles Daly. Thank you, Bennett. I'll say one thing. I'm not going to kid you anymore, Bennett. You've got too many friends. All I've heard all week long is that you and I were having a fight because we were kidding each other last week. No fights at all. We're very good friends, too, but I ain't going to kid you anymore. Okay, John. At least not until next week. <laughs> good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. We're up to our old tricks, and we're going to play a few little variations on familiar themes tonight. One of the first of them will please the panel very much. Put on your blindfolds, please, panel. Thank you. We'll uh, have some unexpected occupations and some nice guests, and we'll mix the two, and we'll stick the panel, I hope. And we'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel. A little bit later in the show, we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? All right, uh, might I ask if you're familiar with our scoring system? Yep. All right, if you're familiar with the scoring system, Let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> now, panel, it goes without saying that you've been asked to blindfold yourselves because there is an area of identification here, either in the handwriting, the costume, the appearance, the name, or some area like that. But we do want to give you a little bit of help. We will tell you that our guest is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you famous for something other than appearing in motion pictures? Yep. Something other than appearing on television? Yep. Uh, may I also discard the Broadway stage? Yep. Are you uh, an American? Yep. Nope? Yep. Yep. Oh. That was it. Yep. 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 Uh, do you do anything that might be called um, public service or uh, <laughs> public um, a, a job for the government or for any government? A job for the government or any oh. government? Nope. Nope. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Swayze. Uh, are you in the entertainment business? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> what you got with that? Sort of. Uh, are you engaged in the pursuit of wealth? <laughs> yep. Uh, do you handle money? Well, you mean above? All above. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in your in your uh, daily endeavors, do you literally handle money? Nope. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. 
Are we blindfolded because we would recognize you rather than the fact that you are dressed in an unusual way? Yep. Uh, would all of us on the panel recognize you? Yep. Well, say. <laughs> um, you are sort of in the entertainment business. Does this mean that perhaps rather than on a, uh, being a performer, you are uh, behind the scenes in some way, either as a producer or writer or uh, director? None of those. <laughs> <laughs> None of those? None of nope. those. Read out and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Well, there's a very important election coming along on Tuesday. Uh, I wonder if you have any connection, official or quasi-official, with, with the coming election. No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. But you have an official or quasi-official connection with entertainment. Yep. But you're not a director, a producer, or a writer. Nope. Do you have anything at all to do with the stage? Nope. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Swayze. Um, are you in the sports world? Nope. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Could you be considered a critic? Yep. A critic that doesn't write. What a relief. No, actually... <laughs> <laughs> no, actually I'll so get that... you, Arlene. <laughs> What? what? No, but just to get the confusion cleared up here, the issue of the writer was raised specifically with uh, respect to behind-the-scenes operations in television. Oh. And I did not believe that uh, you were then asking in the whole area of writing, yes. but rather specifically writing scripts for television. Yes, that's all true, what you said, John, every word of it. <laughs> but anyway, now, we have him a critic. In a, in a way, did he say? No, I believe you got a yup for the critic. A yup. Well... Are you connected with the newspaper? Yep. <laughs> Have you ever been mean to us? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, I know who it is. Jack O'Brien. <laughs> now, I must say that we had to ask you to blindfold yourselves because you all would have recognized Jack, but particularly Miss Dorothy, because they <laughs> are together on the Journal American, INS, King Features. I guess it's all one big happy family. And in her home once in a while. And in her home once in a while. Oh, we, we'd all recognize him, either in person or just reading a column. <laughs> Jack, where's your beautiful wife, Yvonne? In the control room. <laughs> Hello, Yvonne. <laughs> Goodbye, Jack. Well, nice to see you. Hello, Yvonne. <laughs> I was just going to say before Arlene uh, uh, hit the Jack O'Brien that one that when she, would she recognize me? She once wrote me a letter in which, in which she said she loved me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody knows. <laughs> well, Jocko, we did pretty well. We haven't taken them that far down the road for a long time. Congratulations on uh, the disguise. Jack was worried about his voice, so he was giving a yops and nopes and holding his nose. Well, everyone, like Gary I know Cooper. everyone. What, say, Dorothy? <laughs> he sounded like Gary Cooper, blindfolded. Well, I look like Gary Cooper, blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not have any gentle persuasion, and it's been very nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see you, Jack. Well, let's say we didn't fool you completely the first time round, but perhaps oh, we can do brilliant. it this time. Let's have our next challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please, sir? Don. Don Point. Uh, where are you from, Mr. Point? Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Mr. Pointer. Did you load the house tonight? <laughs> hmm? Have you met the panel? Grand people, come with me. Hmm? Yes. Now, Mr. Pointer, you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. All right, then let's let everybody here and those who are looking on at home know exactly what your line is. Mr. Pointer is self-employed, and let's begin the general questions with Miss Francis. Do you like your work, Mr. Pointer? Decidedly. 
Do you deal with people in your work? Mm. Well, to the degree that we all, in the course of any normal activity in a normal day, would come in contact with you members bet. of both. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. uh, do you work indoors? Yes. You could be taken out of doors in your job? Uh, well, yes, yes no. no. I mean, as we might all, in the normal pursuit of our affairs, go uh -huh. from one place to another <laughs> to that degree. <laughs> well, Cincinnati is famous for its zoo. Do you have anything to do with animals? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Pointer, can I eliminate from our thoughts uh, the, the uh, Cincinnati Red Leg baseball team? Yes. And Bertie Tabbitts, who did such a great job. He certainly did. Can we also eliminate the uh, sponsor of both these girls on occasional advertisements for Red Cross shoes that are made in Cincinnati? Yes. And we're on our own. Right. <laughs> do you do any kind of service? No. No, no service. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is there a product connected with what you do? Yes. Is it a product that I might be familiar with? No. <laughs> yes. Is it, a use, is it a useful product? Absolutely. Would it be found in the home? Yes. Uh, would it be found uh, more often in a particular room of the home? Uh, yes. Would it ever be found in the bedroom? No. No, I don't think so. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Swayze. Uh, is it used by various members of a family, the uh, male members as well as the uh, feminine? Y yes. If they should elect to use it, it could be used equally by the two sexes, yes. <laughs> I knew you'd get the election in. <laughs> is it something you can pick up? Yes. Does it help to approve, uh, improve the appearance? Decidedly. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that there are circumstances under which you could safely say it tended to improve the appearance. <laughs> its normal function might be said to be to maintain a norm of appearance. What kind is of it used uh, more by the lady of the house than the man of the house? No. No, I wouldn't think so. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Does it have any moving parts? <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Serf. Mr. Pointer, would this be used possibly for any cleansing or health-provoking purpose? Yes. It would? Uh, might it be found occasionally in the kitchen? No. No? <laughs> Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. John, didn't you say that, that men might elect to use it? No, I said if one elected to use it, it could be used equally by the two sexes. But... <laughs> were you seeking to convey, John, that it is unequally utilized by oh, the sexes? Oh, not at all. No, oh. no, not at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to get that clear. Well, then, could this be used by children if they elected to use it? Um, no, no. I would say if it were, it would be purely by accident and <laughs> not uh, desire. <laughs> it is something that comes in contact with the body. Yes. And it can be used to improve the appearance? Yes. Um, can a child use it safely? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Pardon me? <laughs> what did you say, Mr. Daly? Yeah, I, I reckon a child could use it safely if he didn't get caught, you know. <laughs> if he didn't? If he didn't get caught, did you say? No, actually, that was just a little bit oh. of oh. levity on my part. Uh, can you sit on it? Can you sit on it? <laughs> You could, but you'd wish you wouldn't. Yes, indeed. Eight I'm going to give you one more minute for this. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Does one wish one wouldn't because it would be uncomfortable to sit on? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be uncomfortable to sit on. I don't think that's nine down. <laughs> we, uh, we haven't established, is this something that is worn? Worn, Ben. Yeah. No, no, it isn't. Ten down and no more to go. And Mr. Pointer is the inventor and the manufacturer of whiskey-flavored toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very 
happy to announce for them as has got a predilection for whiskey-flavored toothpaste that there is a whiskey-flavored mouthwash, too. <laughs> I'd like Boy, to send them all a year supply if I could. <laughs> well, would you just send it in weekly lots? We have a program to do every time. Thank you very much. Lots of help. Tonight's mystery guest Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I've asked my friends on the panel once again to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, Daddy. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask questions one at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it with uh, Bennett Sir. Well, <clears throat> does show business claim you as one of its own? Yes. Miss Jill Gallon? <laughs> uh, I have... The ladies. <laughs> what did you say, Bennett? Lady, I think. <laughs> Have you? I'll withdraw that. Uh, are you connected with or starring in, I presume, uh, anything that either opened within the last 10 days or is going to open in the next 10 days? Oh. Film or live? No. <laughs> no, that's one down to 90 young Mr. Swayze. Are you identified with the motion picture industry? Are you identified with the motion picture industry? Mm, darling. <laughs> Pardon me? Yes, darling. Mm. Well. I think you'll get a yes for that, <laughs> Miss Francis. Very seldom. Oh, you gave it away. Yes. You should never be allowed to talk, except when you're performing. <laughs> Are you a great favorite, both here and in England? I will answer that. Yes, very definitely. Have you um, ever sung uh, any of Mr. Noel Coward's songs in reviews? What is it? He said, <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever sung any of Noel Coward's songs in reviews? Noel who? No Coward. You certainly have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lady Peel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you by any chance, Lady Peel? By every chance. You'll <laughs> <laughs> get this, I mean, Lady, if you Lady don't. Peel. <laughs> of you and everybody knows you're inimitable, Miss Lily. Thank you. I was just going to sing something. Would you? Do. <laughs> no, not now, Lily. It'd be nice if you'd sing something for Mr. Card. For Mr. Card? Yeah, or from Mr. Card. What has he written? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to add a note here. B, and that is that you are enchanting as the Salvation Army Bell in Around the World in 80 Days. Thank you very much. That's lovely. I would add one note. I always felt when I found out that Miss Lily was going to be in it that it should be Around the World in eight hours because with this energy in the picture, <laughs> right like that, nothing else happened. Miss well, Lily, if you are going to sing a line, how about March With Me to the Sound of the Drums from the old Charlotte Review? When all the roast beef in the world is eaten, we still shall teach our sons to play the man. And England will be one united empire, from gold as green to far Saskatchewan. <laughs> March with me to the roll of the drum. March to the rousing tune. March with me to the call of the fife. March, march. march. April, May, and June. Right, not June. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Yes, sir, I see. <laughs> we're going to get Bennett a variety show yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get Bennett his own variety show. And then I can kid him and we'll have real fun. Lady Peel, it's wonderful to have had you with us. Thanks so much for coming. Hi, I didn't wonderful last longer. Oh, well, <laughs> I wish we could last the whole half hour. Would you nice say good night to the panel? Nice to see you. I think we must safely describe this as a good night for the panel, but perhaps we can bring that to a sudden death ending right now. Let's see our next challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? Trima? Swift, is that right? Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Swift, and where are you from? York, Pennsylvania. York, Pennsylvania? Fine. There's the panel, nothing to worry about. You can come with me now, sit down right here. I wonder if you're familiar with the way we keep score. Yes, I am. All right, then <laughs> let's let um, everybody here with us and those who are at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, Mrs. Swift is salaried, and we'd begin the general questioning with John Cameron Swayze. Uh, Mrs. Swift, is your work of a seasonal, seasonal character? <laughs> <laughs> yes. In a way, actually, seasonal only to the degree that it um, is decided to be that way. It is not necessarily ordered by nature. Uh, well, the weather affects your business. No. <laughs> no. Thank you very much, John. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. John, forgive me, but I didn't hear whether you said uh, that Mr. Swift was self-employed? Salary. Yes. Salary, yeah. thank you. Uh, do you work um, uh, indoors, Mrs. Yes. Swift? Mm -hmm. Do you work uh, in a building as opposed to an office? Yes. Uh, is it, do you work perhaps for a non-profit making organization? No. 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 That's two down and eight to go. Mr. Surf, you have about two minutes. <laughs> Miss Trema Swift, do they ever sing to you, you're a Trema, aren't we all? <laughs> no, that is, that's not a question, John. Well, there Don't goes that variety <laughs> show. We promised you right there. No variety show for Bennett. Miss Swift, again, I want to come back to a question I asked the first person who was out here tonight. Uh, when you say it's a seasonal work, would, would your work have anything to do with the election that's coming up? No. No. Dog. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. I wouldn't dwell on the seasonal character of the, uh, Mrs. Swift's work. It's not germane, basically. Do you deal in services, Mrs. Swift? Do you deal in services? Yes. yes. Is there any product connected with your services? Yes. Is it a useful rather than a purely luxury product? Yes. <laughs> in fact, might you describe it as utilitarian? <laughs> Would it be around the average house? <laughs> Let me say it would not be impossible for it to be around the average house. But it could be found other places, reasonably. Yes. <laughs> yes. Would it ever be found in an office? Yes. yes. <laughs> could you put anything into it? <laughs> No. no, I don't think so, Miss Dorothy. This is four down and six to go, Mr. Swayze. Is this something I would use? Yes. Uh, in... I just want it in the record clearly that Mrs. Swift answered that question. I didn't. Uh, let me put it a little more precisely. Do I use it? Oh, my. I was afraid somebody would <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> well, I tell you, I'm a brave man, Mrs. Swift, but every once in a while, I'll take advantage of a lifesaver when it's thrown to me, and I've wasted just enough time to flip all the cards right now, and you win them by default. And, John, you'll be glad, because Mrs. Swift models false teeth. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Swift. It's lovely to have you with us. Hope you have fun. And now, 
Before our panel says good night, here's a word from next week's sponsor. And now, until next week. By the way, John, uh, it was very nice having you with us. And I'm glad we ran out of time. And I hope you come back again and have another time with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And until next week, this is John Diddy saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, John. <laughs> and good night, Arlene. <laughs> good night, John. Good night, Bennett. John, you brought up the sartorial level of this program. Yeah. <laughs> good night, John. <laughs> good night, Bennett. By the way, I know you've all heard this a good many times in the last few days. You have a very precious right. Exercise it. Be sure and go to the polls on Tuesday and vote. And we hope that you enjoyed yourselves tonight. And thank you very much for being with us on What's My Line? Travel arrangements on What's My Line are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production in association with the CBS Television Network.